an introduction to hybrid securities. So in this session, we'll go through some of the basics of hybrid securities. So we'll see what are hybrid securities, what are the important hybrid securities, which we will briefly go through. Since it is an introduction, we'll briefly go through each of these hybrid securities, which are preferential share capital, convertible debentures, warrants, deep discount bonds, secured premium notes and options. So first we'll see what are hybrid securities. A sort of classification for securities that combine both debt and equity characteristics and is used by a company to raise money is known as hybrid securities. It's a classification of securities which combines both debt and equity characteristics. There are debt securities and equity uh, securities. So there's a, it's a combination of both. So shareholding is equity, debentures may be debt. So it's a combination of both and is used by the company to raise money. And, and that is known as hybrid securities. Hybrid securities pay a fixed or floating rate of return or dividend until a specific date in the future. At maturity, the holder has several options, including an option to convert the security into an underlying share. So these securities are actually wrapping on top of an underlying share. The share may be an index, it may be a currency, uh, not exactly the share, the underlying security may be a, a currency, uh, it may be an index. So the security will be overlying on top of the underlying security. Now, quite in the contrary, the holder has a known cash flow if he or she owns one of the hybrid securities. And unlike a fixed interest security, this can be converted into an underlying security or share. So we have explained also what is an underlying security. It may be a currency, it may be an index, some things like that. Now, hybrid securities are in most cases structured in a unique way, whereby looking at it, we may feel the price of some security behave more like fixed interest securities, whereas others may behave more like underlying shares to which most of the hybrid securities can be converted. So that is hybrid security. Some of the important hybrid securities are preference share capital, convertible debentures, warrants, deep discount bonds, secured premium notes and options. So we'll go through each of them very briefly since it's an introduction, but in a later session, or maybe we'll have a full session on each of these uh, items, preference share capital, convertible dimensions, warrants, etc. Uh, in a later session, we will actually discuss it more in detail. So first we'll take a look at what is preferential share capital. Preference share capital. So in preference share capital, what we do is uh, we'll, we know what exactly it is. It's actually where a company can obtain funds from preference share capital. In return, the company gives preferential treatment to preference shareholders. So company gives a preferential treatment to the, those shareholders uh, who has preference share capital. Preferential shareholders also enjoy a position above ordinary or equity shareholders in relation to distribution of assets in the event of liquidation of the business in terms of income earned with respect to the distribution of earnings, etc. So whenever there is a distribution of assets, uh, preferential shareholders enjoy a position above ordinary shareholders. Whenever the company goes out of business or in the liquidation of the business, what happens? Preference shareholders gets a position above, which means they get preferential treatment. They get paid before a ordinary or an equity shareholder. Also, in terms of income earned with respect to distribution of earnings, preferential share, preference share uh, capital holders enjoy a position above uh, ordinary shareholders. So we'll explain more on this item in a separate session on preference share capital under hybrid security section. Okay. Next, we'll see what is a convertible debenture. So convertible debentures are convertible to equity shares, either partially or fully at the stated conversion price on a predetermined date. Now, the terms of such debenture issues were fixed by the controller of 
capital issues in India. Now we'll see what is a conversion ratio. So all details regarding conversion ratio, conversion premium or price and conversion timing are mentioned in the offer document or the prospectus. But what exactly is a conversion rate ratio? It determines the number of ordinary shares which are obtained for one convertible debenture uh, of a particular face value. It's, so it's actually it determines the number of ordinary shares which are obtained for one convertible debenture of, of, of a particular face value. Now the conversion price is the price paid for the ordinary share at the so what is conversion price? Conversion price is the price paid for the ordinary share at the time of conversion of a fully or partially convertible debenture. So whatever is the price paid for an ordinary share, not the uh, convertible debenture or, or the price paid for an ordinary share at the conversion of a fully or partial uh, convertible debentures. Hence, in other words, conversion ratio is equal to par value of convertible debentures divided by conversion price. So usually a conversion period for these debentures cannot exceed 36 months unless the holder has the option to exercise his rights in full or in part and also there exists put and call options. So when we discuss options, we'll see what is a put and call option. Now there is also a session dedicated to convertible debentures where we shall explain the details of convertible debentures. Okay. Next we'll take a look at what are warrants. So a warrant is an option to purchase a fixed or specific number of shares at a specific price or purchased when at the expiry of a warrant or when a specific time period is elapsed. In other words, a warrant allows the holder to purchase shares of a company which is fixed in number in future at a fixed or predetermined price. The holder of the warrant is allowed to sell or transfer his right in the secondary market or he or she is allowed to keep his or her right on the instrument as an investment. Now, if the holder of the warrant exercises the option, the investor becomes a shareholder in the usual or normal way. So if the holder decides that he has to exercise the option of warrant, the investor who is whoever is investing, who is the holder, may, may be the holder, be, may become a shareholder in the usual or normal way. The investor who exercises the option sends the required cash and warrants to the issuing company, where the company upon receipt of these documents issues shares. We'll see more about warrants in a separate session under hybrid securities. So we'll uh, explain uh, the details of warrant in a uh, section under hybrid securities. Now, uh, we have already explained what are the things a holder of a warrant can do. Now, next is deep discount bond. A deep discount bond is a zero interest bond and is not convertible. Even though a deep discount bond has a face value, it is usually lower or is at a discounted value. So that is deep discount bond. So it is a zero interest bond and the bond is convertible. The deep discount bond is redeemable at the expiry of a specific period at face value. So that is also possible in the case of deep discount bond. Next is secured premium notes. So secured premium notes is a tradable instrument where the holder gets equity shares after a predetermined period of time and it has a detachable warrant. So it's a detachable warrant against which equity shares are released in the case of secured premium notes. It also has a feature of medium to long term notes. Next we'll take a look at options. What are options? Options is a contract that gives the holder the right but not an obligation for a specified time period to buy or sell an underlying asset. So it may be a bond, stock, currency or index which may be an underlying asset. So the options give, it's a contract that gives the holder the right but not an obligation for a specific time period to buy or sell an underlying asset at a predetermined price. So there are two types of options which I, I was talking about. It is a call or put option. So we'll see what is a call option. 
A call option gives the purchaser or buyer the right to buy an underlying security at a pre-specified price called the strike price or exercise price. In return, should pay the seller an upfront fee known as call premium. So usually the call premium is a negative cash flow for the buyer because he is paying the seller unless the underlying security price goes up or goes greater than the exercise price. So he will be at a uh, premium only the, uh, despite pay, paying the call premium, he will be at an advantage only if the underlying security price goes up or goes greater than the exercise price. So that is what is call option. Now we'll see what is put option. Put option on the other hand gives the option buyer the right to sell an underlying security, maybe a stock, at a pre-specified price to the writer or seller of the put option. In return, the buyer pays a put premium to the seller. So if the underlying stock price is less than the exercise price when the option expires, the buyer will buy the underlying stock in the stock market at less than the exercise price and immediately sell it at the exercise price of the put option. So that is what is put option. So this completes uh, an introduction to hybrid securities. We will also have a detailed session on options where we will explain what exactly is an option, what are call options, what are put options, etc. And the mechanisms which go underneath that. Okay, thank you.